Hey, this is James from All Hail Internal Combustion. Uh, today we're gonna get on doing these brakes on our extended cab F-150. This is the passenger side. This is the one that was all tore up. So uh, on this side we're gonna get a new brake hose. We're getting a new caliper. New bearings, new dust seals, a new rotor. Happy, happy brakes. Uh, I've already got my brake fitting back there sprayed down with some PB Blaster. Although that probably won't do a damn thing. Uh, this is either... I've already tried to put a wrench onto it and give it a little turn. And it didn't feel like it wanted to cooperate. So I'm probably going to have to get medieval on it. Uh, vice grips. Tap it with a hammer. Hold, make sure to hold the other side. And see if I can work it back and forth and back and forth. I've had some good luck using old brake lines and I've had some that just completely came apart but these feel pretty solid just they've been together forever so I'm gonna get up under there and get the vice grips on it can't film it because it's a weird angle but I will either come back very happy or very sad okay so what did happen is I put a pair of vice grips on it and I managed to get it broken free from the line itself. So what I did was I pushed it through. Then I spun my line and my caliper off of it. Unfortunately, my nut is rusted to the line. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a torch and heat the nut up and try and work it left and right and keep hitting it with PB Blaster to see if I can save it because the line behind it feels really really firm so if I can get that pushed back a little bit get it cleaned up get some scotch Brite in there put a little anti-seize on it I should be able to reuse this hard line alright so back to this uh, brake job which ended up turning into more of a brake job because Junior decided well you know we don't need the truck so let's uh, go ahead and take it apart and do it all right and I'm cool with that so what I did was I picked up some Coro Seal. Hopefully y'all can actually see that because the light out here is kind of crappy now with how the sun is. But There we go. Uh, got this stuff off uh, Amazon. It was 50 bucks for a whole gallon. Um, and what you want to do with it, you prep it just like any other service that you're going to put some kind of a sealer or paint onto you remove all your heavy flaky rust and spray it on down with carburetor cleaner now the surface is prepped so what you're going to do is you're just going to go ahead and take your coro seal and brush it on there and as you can see it goes on kind of milky and white looking but when it dries it's going to dry to a black finish that we found is actually pretty durable i'm gonna go ahead and do the nuts and everything too because this way it'll keep it sealed until we get in here and have to do any more work to the truck but yeah we've uh i put this stuff on the frame of my 82 ford pickup truck and then painted over top with rust-oleum and it's held up really 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 good and we've also just used this stuff by itself and uh it held up really 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 good after two and a half years so if you're looking for a less expensive alternative to like poor 15 which is a great product but man it's expensive uh give Cora seal a try it's uh it's 30 bucks for a quart and 50 bucks for a gallon so we that's why i just went ahead and got the whole gallon because i pretty much use this stuff on everything and i know i'm definitely going to use the gallon it'll probably take me a while to use the gallon but who cares it doesn't really harden up it doesn't really go bad and it has a vinegary smell to it which always makes me want some boardwalk fries but i'm very far away from the boardwalk so I'm going to go ahead and keep Coro sealing this, and once it dries up, I will bring you guys back and show you exactly what it looks like when it's done. Alright, it's kind of hard to see in the light, but as you can see, I got the Coro seal on there and it dried up. There's a 
couple spots that turn brown and it says on the bottle if it turns brown then it has some kind of a chemical contamination in it so i'll go ahead and scratch some areas up and give them another little touch up but this thing is pretty much ready to go back together junior's over working on the other side so i'm probably going to start putting this side together and uh keep going with this thing till we get the brakes done all right we got our uh backing plates all cleaned down and <clears throat> painted ford blue and i got those bolted back up and next thing i'm gonna do is go ahead and pop the uh new rotor on here junior's back there putting the uh bearings into it and the new dust seal so get to that next okay i got the new rotor on there and it was kind of a juggling act so i didn't start the camera when i was doing it but what you generally want to do is you want to take a little bit of grease and wipe it around your spindle where your seal is going to go then you want to make sure your bearing is packed inside of your rotor go ahead and slide it all on there make sure you got a fair amount of grease inside where your outside bearing is going to go and that that bearing is greased then you want to make sure you put your washer on there and your nut we're not going to set the final tightening of this until we get the wheel on because what i like to do is put the wheel on there jack it up and set my bearing i usually like to get one and a half spins out of it and then that's where i'll set my bearing at put my retainer on and put my cotter pin into it so we're pretty much together as far as the rotor goes I have to get the caliper, put the new brake line in, and of course get the brake pads and make sure I got all that stuff together. So once again, we will be back. Okay, another thing you want to do before you put your calipers back on, put a super light coat of grease on here. Right here where this slide is, underneath where this slide is. So now the juggling act ensues. I've already got my back pad on with the anti-rattle clip at the bottom. So go ahead and slip this in here. Push it in at the top. Bring the bottom in. Now I've got my lower slide. And my bolt and there's also this clip that goes in there so let me go ahead and throw all this in all right as you can see i got everything together i just need to tighten my bolt up down here on these uh fords you put a bracket in and there's a spring clip on top of it and you tap that in until it lines up with your bolt hole then you run this bolt in to hold everything secure we also got our new brake lines put in. We got a brand new clip back in here. And there's our new brake line. He decided to paint the brake lines blue. I don't know why they looked okay silver, but hey, he loves sniffing paint sometimes. Um, another thing you got to do is your new brake lines all come with new, they call it copper, but it's really only copper colored. So what you want to do is you want to tighten it down, not too tight because you don't want to break your banjo bolt off. That'll be a bad day. And then you take on the end of it, give it a couple taps. And this was tight before. And as you can see, it got loose and I was able to give it another turn. So I'm going to go ahead and do that one more time. Because this isn't copper like we used to have back in the old days. See, got loose again. This isn't copper. It's a, a copper-like alloy. And it just doesn't crush down the way our old copper banjo washers used to do. So that's that. So once I get this bolt tightened up on here, he's working on the other side. We're going to go ahead and refill the system full of fluid. And we're going to bleed the brakes. I'm expecting on this truck... These things gravity bleed really, really good. So we're going to go ahead and fill up our master cylinder and crack the bleeders and see what comes through. And then we'll decide from there whether we actually need to get in and do the pump the pedal thing and all that happy brake crap. All right, so we're uh, 
in the final stages here I'm on the driver's side and we're going to bleed the brakes out and if you look back up in here on the caliper where I got the wrench that's your bleeder you always make sure they're up on top if you're replacing calipers because sometimes you can goof and get the caliper on the wrong side normally what you do when you start this process is have somebody pump your brake pedal 10 times slow and then hold it and you do that until you get all your air out of the system we've already been through the 10 on this so we're uh in the last stages of it and we're putting new fluid through the system so i'm only going to have him pump it five times don't forget to mention that you start with the tire furthest away from the yeah and you always start with your tire the furthest away since we just did the back brakes on this there's no need for us to go into the back end of this truck we're just on the fronts now so you would start with your rear passenger side tire, then move to your rear driver's side, then move to your passenger side in the front, and this would be the last one, the driver's side front wheel, because it's closest to your master cylinder. Right. So he's going to pump it five times. Five and, holding. and he's holding it, and I'm going to go ahead and crack the bleeder open. And oh, look at all that lovely fluid right on top of our freshly painted parts. Life is grand. I'm going to have him go ahead and do it again. Pedal is really tight. And the pedal is super tight. That's always a good sign. I'm going to open it again. All fluid, no bubbles. And that is going to conclude the brake job on the good old F-150. And as you can see, we replaced everything because we just did exactly the same thing in the back. So now all the brakes around the entire truck are matched up and new. So we're going to get to putting the wheels back on the truck and then we'll go ahead and set the bearings. And this particular job is a wrap. And we're back. One and one sixteenth. So we're going to tighten this down a little bit. One and a half. One and a half. Perfect. Now what we're going to do is put our retainer clip on. After we wipe all the dirt out of it. And I need a new cotter pin. And then we got to go find a new cotter pin. Alright, so we got the right cotter pin for the job. We're going to put this cotter pin in. <laughs> Oh, it doesn't fit in the hole. You want to make sure you're using the right cotter pin for the job. And you got a thin one here. But look how far it almost falls through there, you know? You want something that kind of fits, not snug, but it should fill the hole nicely. So, you get that, you put it in sideways. Ugh, jeez. Okay. Take the long saw and you wrap it around like that. Cut that extra off because you don't need it. All right, then you just wrap this side around. Don't need that either. All right, give it a little tap. Tuck it in. It'll be all right because it'll be behind our beautiful new little dust cover. It can be a pain to get in there sometimes. I grab my piece of wood I use for putting fields in. Hopefully I didn't dent it. I did. Damn it. It happens, but you always want to make sure and give your wheel a spin after you get your dust cover on just to make sure nothing's clicking and clacking. That sounds good. All right, so that's it for the brake job on this. We're uh, going to put our center cap on, put the other wheel back on, but this truck is back in service right where it belongs. And we're going to get back to that prelude in the next video. Hooray!
All right, this is James and James from All Hail Internal Combustion. Make sure you like, subscribe, tell your friends, tell people you don't like. I don't care. Tell your cat. If your cat subscribes, that's cool. But uh, see y'all next time. Thanks. Thanks for watching.